Welcome to South Point Church Online. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. And if it's your first time, we want to extend a special welcome to you and give you a rundown of what you can expect. Uh, in just a few moments after we get done chatting, we're going to join the live service. And the worship team is going to bring a couple of songs where we can worship together. And then Pastor Matt is back with his first sermon in a new series called Upstream. Pastor Matt is back from his summer study break, and we are very excited to have him back. Speaking of summer, can you believe that we're almost all the way through? It's August 1st, and we are looking uh, at school coming back and uh, summer vacations ending. So what about you guys? I know I am really uh, sad to see summer go this year. I have enjoyed this time and wish that we had more of a break. But maybe uh, you are looking forward to the fall and uh, the fair and cool, crisp evenings and the routine of school. Let me know in the chat what you are looking for. Uh, while you're down there, go ahead and fill out your Connect card. Uh, it's quick, it's easy, and it lets us know that you are here. Uh, we won't come knock on your door unless you want us to. Well, we really won't. Um, and uh, it just gives us a record of your attendance. You can get some prayer requests and get connected to resources that you might need. In a few moments, we're going to join the worship team, uh, and they are going to be singing songs uh, and leading us in worshiping our God. Let's join them now. South Point Church, we are so thrilled to be in the house of the Lord with you. Whether you're joining us online or in person, would you stand either to your feet or with the posture of your heart? And let's worship our Lord and Savior together today.
victorious. We don't know if we'll see that victory in this life or when we see him in heaven, but we will see a victory. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never
God, we praise you. We thank you for the honor that it is to stand before you today because, God, your word says that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in their presence. So, God, we thank you for filling this place with your presence today. God, we love you so much. And we know we will see a victory in you because you have won the battle. You are victorious. God, we don't know if we will see it while we are alive here on earth or if we're going to wait and see that victory when we are with you in heaven but we put our eyes on you. We trust in you. God, would you um, move through Pastor Matt today? We thank you and praise you that he is back today. God, would you just use him in a powerful way? God, would, you, would your words come from his mouth to our ears? God, we love you so much. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Church, you can be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to South Point Church. Is anyone fired up this morning? Hey, we want to say good morning and welcome to all of those of you watching online, wherever you might be watching from today. We also want to say hi to those of you in Auditorium 8. We're so glad that you're with us. And we want to say hi to those of you in person here in Auditorium 12. Now listen, I'm really fired up about our new series called Upstream, The Power of Different in a Do More World. And here's why I think it's worth sticking around regardless of where you are when it comes to matter of faith. Because it's in a truth that applies to all of us. And here's kind of the big truth that applies to all of us, no matter where we're at. And we're going to put it up on the screen. this. Listen, everyone, me, you, that's why you showed up today. All of us, everyone wants to be what? Better at life. And everyone wants to be better at life. Listen, all of us want to have a better life. And all of us want to be better at at life. And this is regardless of whether you showed up today and you're kind of just checking out who Jesus is. Maybe you grew up with something different other than God or Jesus, or maybe you've been going to church your whole life. Here's what I know to be true about me, you, and we, is that we all want a better life and we all want to be better at life. And when we kind of talk about, well, what does a better life look like? What does it look like to be better at life? There are some things I think all of us have in common, regardless of where we're at in our faith journey. And I'm going to put those on the screen and And here's what we want. We want more love, right? We want our friends to love us. We want our families to love us. We hope that our spouse loves us. When we have kids, we hope that our kids love us. We want everyone to love us. We hope that we have more love. We want to have joy. We we want to have peace in our hearts. We want to have hope. We want our lives to have some kind of significance. The reality it is, is to have a better life and to be better at life. We want more of these things. Does anybody here want more of those things? Maybe just type amen in the chat. Like we want more of these things, right? But a better life and being better not only means we want more of stuff, it also means that we want less of some other stuff. And so here's some things that we want less of, right? We want less chaos. Got any parents in the house that know what I'm talking about? Yeah, less chaos, less stress, less frustration, less hurt, and less apathy. See, being better at life and having a better life means we want more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff, right? Just nod your head if you're with me, right? Like that's what all of us want, regardless of where you, how you've responded to Jesus. We all want this. Now, today, I'm going to share a truth that you'll rarely hear in church, but we've all experienced and we all know this to be true, right? Now, if this is true of me. Maybe it's true of you. How many of us, the harder we try to get this, we end up with less of what we want and more 
of the stuff that we don't want. And that ever happened to you? Kind of the more that you work, the harder that you try to like have love and joy and peace and significance and hope and joy and all these other things, we end up with more chaos and stress and apathy and hurt. We end up with more of the things that we don't want. I mean, think about it. How many of you have ever had something like this happen to you? Maybe you're on your way to lunch with a friend and on the way there, you're like, listen, I'm gonna be a present friend. Like I'm gonna be a good listener. I'm gonna ask good questions. And so you kind of in this idea in your head, you're like, listen, I'm gonna be a present friend. And then you you get there and you over talk and under listen. Any, anyone ever, ever done that? Like, I, I know I've done that. And maybe today was the day that you were going to be a patient parent as you prepared to get your kids to church. Got anybody shaking their head right now? Like, I was going to be a patient parent, but you showed your frustration. You know, you're like, man, this is where I wanted to be, but I ended up somewhere else. How many of us wanted to be an engaged employee? We're like, when I go to work today, like, I'm going to be all in. I'm going to give it my best. And then you show up and you're demotivated and distracted. You end up, uh, distracted by like the internet and the web and social media and you just didn't end up where you wanted to. Maybe for you, you want to be a peaceful person, right? You're like, listen, I got to go to Walmart today. I got to go to Target. I got to go out. You know, everyone's kind of upset and angry. And I'm like, why are you angry? You get to shop. You got a good life. I don't know why you're so angry, right? So you're like, I'm going to go out and be a peaceful person. But then people are rude and they're mean and they're jerks. And then so you put on your jerk face and you're like, ah, oh, that's not where I wanted to be, right? How many of us have said, you know what? When I get home tonight, I'm going to be an attentive spouse. You know, we're just going to, we're going to connect and just be relational, right? But you get home, you're exhausted. And, and so you settle for vegging on your laptop or your cell phone. And so if we're really honest today, I wonder how many of us who want a better life and who want to be better at life and want more of this and less of this end up with less of this and more of that. And our answer, if we're really honest most of the time to this, is what I call the more solution, right? And more falls into two things because listen, we don't want to be failures and we really hope that God won't fail us. So we usually fall into two camps of more. And so there's the more effort, right? Like I'm just going to try hard. I'm going to try to be more loving. I'm going to try to have more joy, peace, hope. And so, like the more thing, I'm just going to try to do more. And so we kind of do more. And then for other stuff, we just kind of give up and, and then we kind of go into the, the more medication, right? Like I'm just going to binge me some Netflix. I'm just going to eat me some food. I'm going to do whatever it is to medicate my life. And the reality is, is that I bet we swing between those extremes of more medication or more effort. And if we're really honest, as we adult through life, to be better and to have a better life, more often leaves us with this truth that I'm going to put up on the screen. And it's this right here. The ever increasing more, whether it's medication or effort, leaves us Come on, the first service, man. Come on, they were better than you all. Y'all not gonna let them beat you, are you? The ever-increasing more leaves us exhausted and overwhelmed and disappointed, right? Like, I mean, the more, listen, you can't, you can't medicate your way to happiness, to peace and significance. We keep trying the more thing. And you know, what's the old saying of, if you do the same thing, repeatedly expecting different results, that's a form of, right? Like we just keep doing more, hoping that somehow it'll change. And then here's the thing, like, is it possible that maybe we could find the solution to this problem that all of us face, regardless of how we responded to Jesus, through a simple question that we want to ask as we go through this series? And here's the question that I want us to ask today. What if an extraordinary life doesn't come from extra? Now, you might be thinking, Matt, extra is right in the word, extraordinary. Like we think to have an extraordinary life, we need to do extra. But what if an extraordinary life doesn't actually come from more? Now, if you know anything about me, I love to nerd out on science facts. So in a few minutes, I'm going to nerd out on some science and some of your eyes might glaze over. But before I nerd out on some science stuff, I want to share a story that just happened to me a couple weeks ago that I think paints this amazing picture of a core truth that is at the core of this whole series of these next weeks that we're going to go through. So I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Uh, our family, we had to run an errand, right? So we get in the car and there's like three of us in the car. We're heading down to this thing. And in the middle, and it's on the other side of town and in St. Mary's, that's not really far. It's about a five to 10 minute drive, right? And so we're going on the other side of town to run this errand. So my wife's in the car and her kid's in the car, right? And we're just in the middle of this cool conversation and we're talking. And so we're driving and just, it's just a really good time. You know, the music's down low. We're having this great conversation. All of a sudden, as we get close to our destination, I realize something. I've gone the wrong way. I mean, have you ever done that? Like on your way to work, you're thinking about something and you pull into your parking spot and you go, I don't know how I got here. 
Like, how about on the way home from work? Like, you just, you were on autopilot. You're like, how did I not hurt somebody driving my car? Because I wasn't really. So I was in the middle of this conversation. I was just, it was kind of a beautiful evening. And I know that I wanted to get to one place, but my habits, my autopilot, because every time I go to that side, I usually take this way. So I got, and I realized as we were there, that I had to turn around. And we all kind of laughed that I had to turn around and go the other way. And here's what happened. There was one place I wanted to get to. There was a destination I wanted to get to. Unfortunately, my habit, my autopilot took me to a place that I didn't want to be. Now, here's the truth. And here's what modern science has confirmed, but God's been telling us all along. What's true about when we drive is also true about our lives. Now, this is where I get the nerd out on some sides. Matter of fact, I woke up 2.30 this morning. I couldn't wait to share this. So like, I promise it'll be short. So those of you non-science people, I won't glaze you over. But I found this really awesome article by MIT. Now, MIT is not a Christian school. Matter of fact, they're a very technical school. They're very well known in the country and the world as being one of the, you know, the, the, the good learning centers of education. And here's what there's an article of MIT. I'm going to put them says, listen, it's a fascinating topic. Habits are autopilot rather than conscious decision-making can shape as many as 45% of the choices we make every day according to a study from Duke University. And this has been confirmed over and over by different study and different study is that you and I, it's our habits, help us make decisions that we didn't even think about. We can go through half of our day and make decisions that we didn't even think about because of our habits. I mean, come on. Have you ever started a day where you go, today's going to be different? How many of y'all have ever said that? Like, today's going to be today. Today's going to be different. And you get to the end of your day and your day wasn't different. Like, it's happened to me. Like, I need Jesus just like everyone else, right? And you wonder, well, how did I get to the end of the day when I had this plan to end up differently? And here's what it tells us, that half the decisions that we're making aren't really decisions we're making. We're just on autopilot. And it's not just MIT and Duke. There's an article in Psychology Again, Psychology Today, again, not a Christian organization. And they were talking about all the studies about this. And, and here's what they say in Psychology Today, whether you realize it or not. And so this is so important because whether you intend to or not intend to is not the point. I intended to get to the right store, but my habits took me to a different place. It was not my intention. Whether you realize it or not, a lot of your daily, what's that word? Your daily behavior is composed of habits. These are you mean I'm on autopilot? These are automatic behaviors that you do without even thinking. For most people, most of the time. Now I'm going to stop. I'm going to offend everybody in the room. Just bing, buckle up, okay? Because whenever we hear most of the people, most of the time in church, we got a picture of somebody else, don't we? Man, my family member could really use this message right now. Man, my spouse, I'm not going to elbow them, but I hope they're listening. Man, you know that my neighbor down the street, you know, my family member, we're always thinking about this is somebody else, but you know who it really applies to? Ourselves. That's right, preaching. Somebody's fired up today. Thank you. Like really, when it says most of the people, most of the time, they're talking, they're talking to me. They're, they're talking to you. They're not talking to your neighbor or your family member or your spouse. They're talking to you. And here's what they say. Habits are created unconsciously. Did you know we have things that we do on autopilot that we didn't plan to put on autopilot because habits are created unconsciously and they are carried out automatically. And I wonder how many of us here today want a better life and we want to be better at life. We want this destination, but our autopilot, our daily habits are leading us to a different destination. And here's what the science says. This is science fact. So like you can take Jesus out of the equation, but here's the cool thing. Jesus and God been telling us way before modern science. Modern science just confirms what Jesus has been telling us. Here's what modern science tells us. They say this, listen, we're going to go to the next slide. Modern science says this, we become what we repeatedly do. I mean, Jesus says you will reap what you what? So science in these two books, they were best Best New York bestsellers, Atomic Habits and the Power Habits. I've read one of the books. It's amazing. It's all about the research of habits. And it says we become what we repeatedly do. And listen, if you're watching online and you kind of got distracted and your kids or you want to get a cup of coffee, maybe I've already nerded you out with all the science stuff and your eyes glaze over. I need to bring you back in because if you miss this, you will miss the whole point of the series. And here it is. It is not my want to. It is not your intentions. It's not even our desire that determines our destination. 
It's not want to. It's not intentions. It's not even desire that determines our destination. It is the detailed daily habits of our life. I mean, that's why Jesus said daily, take up your cross and follow me. And so it leaves you and it leaves me and it leaves all of us asking this question. Maybe we end up at a destination we don't want to be, not because we don't intend to, but because maybe we've built in some habits that are autopiling it in a different direction than we want to end up to. Now, this is why I was so far. I couldn't wait to get here this morning. This is why I've taken all the chips in my life and I've put them right in the middle and I've bet all that I am in all my life on Jesus because listen, Jesus addresses this very issue. Listen, here's some good news today. You and I are not the first human beings to struggle with our autopilot leading us to a place that we don't want to be. Human beings have been struggling with this since the beginning. And Jesus' answer to this is shocking and surprising. And if you've never gone to church, I mean, Jesus is going to shock you when he gives us the solution. God knew that we would struggle. So let's take a look at the eyewitness account in the Gospel of Matthew. Not at my words, but the word of Jesus and what Jesus says. And so here's how Jesus tells us. He says, come to me. What's that word? Now, church folk, uh, you know, for those of you that aren't, aren't from church, like you need to eat some popcorn, like all means all. <laughs> Matter of fact, the core value number two is everyone is loved and welcomed at South Point because every human being is made in the image of God. Therefore, everyone will have dignity and respect. Jesus calls all people who are weary and burdened. Got any weary and burdened people here? Anyone tired of kind of the adulting rat race that we're in right now? Just want some peace and some joy and some significance. Just want something different than what the world is offering us. He says, come to me all. And you know, we have a little saying here at South Point, we don't care why you're here today. You can come as you are. Jesus says, you don't have to clean yourself up. That's what's scandalous about the good news of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you did last night or last week or last year, that all of us can come to Jesus because there is no sin that the blood of Jesus can't wash away. We don't have to clean ourselves up to come to him. If we were gonna clean ourselves up, we would have done it already. That's why we can come just as we are. God isn't concerned about where we've been. God is more concerned about where we're going. And here's the great news is that you and I don't be, have to be defined by what we've done or what's been done to us because the empty tomb, listen, you and I can disagree, but the tomb of Jesus is empty. That's a historical fact. We can be defined by that instead of what's been done by us or to us. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you. You notice he doesn't say shame. He doesn't say guilt. He doesn't say religion. What is the word that Jesus has used? Come to me and I will give you What? See, most of us come to church and we think Jesus is going to pile on and give us a list of things to do. But Jesus doesn't give us a list of things to do. Jesus doesn't even tell us to clean up. So he says, listen, you just come to me just the way you are. You let me worry about fixing you. And I will give you rest. And then he utters the most important part. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, at South Point, we have these little things called bucko moments. Just bing, right? Like church folk, I'm about to offend everyone in the room, right? And I think church, we're part of the problem. Like I'm part of the problem. Pastors are part of the problem. See, church folk, we like to learn about Jesus. See, Jesus didn't ask us to learn about Jesus. He said, learn from me. See, I think we all want the results of the life of Jesus. We just don't actually want to live like Jesus. Come on now. We want to know a lot about Jesus. Oh, I learned a lot about Jesus. I said, amen. I raised my hand. It was good at church today. But did we actually learn from him? Because he says, take my yoke upon you. Now, listen, for all of you folk from the local area here in St. Mary's, listen, I need to let you know something. I grew up in the city. I was born in Washington, D.C. I lived in the hood in government housing until I was 12, and then I was incarcerated. Listen, I don't know anything about cattle, sheep, fishing. I don't know. My daughter asked me to fish, and I caught a weed. <laughs> right? She was very disappointed, Right? When Jesus says, take my yoke, I went back and here's what you understand. The people of Jesus' day, they were very, like the agriculture was their community. And so the way that you would plow fields to make crops is, is you would take these animals and you would yoke them together because two are better than one. And what you would typically do is you would take an older cow or older steer or older animal and you would put it with the younger one because the younger one didn't know what it was doing, but the older one did. Jesus is saying, listen, you should tie yourself to me because I created life. I know what I'm doing. You don't need to just know about me, you need to learn. And so the question is, is are we tied to Jesus? 
but he doesn't stop because we should all ask the question, especially if you're here today and you're kind of exploring who Jesus is, or maybe you grew up with something you're like, why should I tie myself to Jesus? Why should I trust Jesus? He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. One of the few verses in all of scripture where Jesus describes what he's like on the inside. And so I'm just going to offend everyone right now. Like if you're on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or any of those social media things and your posts aren't humble and gentle, you ain't being like Jesus. Hey, that's what Jesus said. Like, if you're offended, take it up with him. Now, here's the thing. Here's what's awesome. Jesus says, no one puts me on the cross. I go to the cross. Jesus, as he was nailed to the cross, said, Father, forgive them. Anyone that would die for you is for you. The reason we should be willing to tie ourselves to Jesus, the reason we should be willing not to just learn about Jesus, but to learn from Jesus, is Jesus is the creator who died so that we wouldn't have to live broken lives. And you know how we know we can trust him? Because his tomb is empty. He conquered hell and death, and he's been transforming lives for thousands of years. And then he goes on to say this, and you will find Maybe we haven't found rest because we're learning a lot about Jesus, but we're not really learning from Jesus. For my yoke is easy and my burden is because Jesus doesn't pile on. If I was going to sum up what Jesus said, I would say it this way. Jesus doesn't ask for. See, we come to church and we think, well, God's going to want more. And Jesus doesn't ask for more. Jesus invites us to different. And see, the reason that Jesus invites us to different and doesn't tell us is because love always requires a choice, right? For true love to be true love, for a relationship to be real, you have to choose. That's why Jesus says, I, for God so loved the world. That's why we have the ability to say no and reject. And then we get all the brokenness. So God doesn't ask for more, but Jesus does invite us to different. What if a better life and being better at life isn't about, but about, hmm, maybe if we did different, we would get different results. And so there's just one reality and a truth that kind of sums up this whole series. And I kind of want to walk us through kind of this one reality and this one truth, because if we don't understand this reality and we don't believe this truth, then we'll never end up at the place that we want to be, which is to have a better life and to be better at life. And here's the reality. I'm going to put it on the screen and it's this, ignoring. Like, come on, man. Like we can ignore the truth that habits our autopilot form more than our schedules. They form our hearts and our lives. We become what we do. Science has confirmed that. God has been telling us that from the beginning. Listen, we can ignore that truth, but then we just won't end up where we want to be. Ignoring the truth that habits form more than our schedules, they form our hearts and our lives, will keep us stuck in the dysfunctional loop of more effort or more medication, but we end up at the same place. We're not better at life and we don't end up with a better life. And so if we ignore the truth, that it is the detailed daily habits that lead to our destination, not our want to, not our intentions, not our desires, but the daily habits. If we ignore this reality, we just stay stuck in the dysfunctional loop. True story, I've been, I've been married to my bride for 27 years. You should give her a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm a knucklehead. Like, I need Jesus every day. Like, she, she's put up with a lot for me. So we've been married for 27 years. Now, before we got married 27 years ago, when her mom was still alive, right, uh, I used to go over to visit my wife. And man, it was awesome. I would always want to spend time with her. But whenever I'd go over there, her mom always had a jug of sweet tea in the fridge. Anyone had some sweet tea from the South? Like, mmm, it's just good. And you know, it's kind of like where that sugar grits on your teeth a little bit. Mmm, that's, oh, that's the best kind of sweet tea. Yes. Anyway, so I would go over there and I'd have sweet tea. It was so good. And so when my wife and I got married, right, my wife said, do you want me to make sweet tea? And I was like, yes, you mean I get to be married to you and get sweet tea? Like I've won the lottery. How awesome is this? And so we had this like blue jug and it had a little white top. And my wife, you know, a couple times a week would make sweet tea. And so I'd get home from work and I'd pour, you know, those big glasses, a glass of iced tea. And I'd drink and I'd have a glass of iced tea at dinner. And then as we were watching TV before we'd go to bed, I'd have a big glass of iced tea. Well, a couple of months into marriage, I realized that I wasn't sleeping very well. 
Now you have to understand, because I grew up in the hood and because I spent a lot of time of my juvenile kind of in the justice system, you know, I thought maybe it was because my wife was sleeping next to me. I was like, hey, I'm gonna have to kick you out of the bed. Like, I need to get my sleep. Because like, you know, like when you don't get sleep at night, you're not a functional human being. It's hard to be nice, right? If you don't get good sleep, it's hard to be functional in your job. And like, I just wasn't good in a good night's sleep. And you're not thinking about like, how am I gonna do this? I, we're just brand new married. I don't wanna like ask my wife to get out of bed so I can get a good night's sleep. That's not gonna end well for me. Like, I'm not smart, but I ain't that stupid, right? <laughs> And so it's hilarious, like one night on like my fourth giant glass of sweet tea, I had this thought, what if the sugar and the caffeine in the sweet tea that I'm drinking right before the bed is the reason that I can't fall asleep? And you're laughing at me, but I'm preaching to y'all. Right. And so here's what I discovered is, is that I had this habit that led to a destination of not getting a good night's sleep. And I didn't realize that that habit just kind of kicked in. And all of a sudden I was like, man, I got to kick this habit because it's not leading to where I want to go. And I wonder how many of us online or in Auditorium 8 or here in the room or if you watch on demand. Almost. Have these automatic habits that lead us to a place that we do not want to be. So that's the reality. Well, what's the truth? And here's the truth that we need that Jesus tells us is this. Our small habits create big impact. I mean, that's why Jesus again said, you pick up your cross daily because it's the small habits that create big impact. And listen, listen, come on. Here in America in the West, man, we like one and done. Can I get an amen? Like uh, y'all are lying right now. Come on, if you could eat a salad once and then have bacon the rest of your life and be healthy, wouldn't you do that? Like, I want to eat one salad and then be done. And I want some bacon on my salad to start with, right? <laughs> How many of us go to the gym for a week and get home and flex in the mirror and go, why ain't it working? <laughs> I budgeted for a week. Why aren't I rich and out of debt, right? Like, you know, we all have this thing where well, here's what we want. We want some big thing to create lasting change so we don't have to do the daily work. Because we want to be one and done. But both God and Jesus tells us that's not how life works. And by the way, science confirms this. Science has confirmed that it's your small daily habits that lead to a transformational life give you an example from history. Matter of fact, it's one of the greatest victories in all of history. It's, it's uh, recorded as an eyewitness account in the Bible. It's about a guy named David, who was a shepherd who fought this warrior named Goliath. Maybe you've heard of the battle of David and Goliath. It's famous even outside of church circles, right? So you have to understand, Goliath was a seven foot muscle bound giant who had been undefeated. And he was in the opposing army. He'd come out every day to the Israel army. And he'd stand before him and he would challenge him. He'd say, hey, if any of you come out and can beat me, we'll serve you. But if I beat your guy, then you guys will be our servants. He was so imposing and so powerful and so big, the whole army would melt and run away every day. And then along comes this teenage kid. He's probably somewhere between 16 and 18. We don't know for sure. But he's a shepherd and he's delivering some food to his brothers in the army. And he hears this challenge and he goes to King Saul. And he says, King Saul, I'll fight him. And everyone's like, are you looking for your big moment? You think you can really do this? He's, he's been, he's been a, like a soldier since his youth and you're just a shepherd. And then all of a sudden, David reveals the truth. He says, you don't understand. I've been watching my father's sheep every day in the cold and in the rain and the harshness. And when the thieves in the bears, notice he didn't say one bear, he said the bears, not like the Chicago bears, but like living bears, ah, right? He said the bears and he said the lions. And as Saul says, you can't go out, he says, listen, you don't understand. When the lion came to eat the sheep, I didn't run. When no one could see, I defended the sheep and I struck the lion and I struck the bear and I killed them. And this giant will be the same. See, for many of us, we want the moment to make us, but the Bible tells us the moment only reveals who we already are. See, the reality is, is the big moment only reveals who we are. See, it's our small habits that lead to big impact. And so... If I was going to sum this message up in one kind of thing, I would say this, better, right? We want to have a better life. We want to be better. Better comes from different habits, not doing more of the same. To get different, we have to do different. 
And that is the whole crux of this is, what does it look like? Instead of doing more, trying harder, what if we did different instead? So I want to close with a true story. Now, if you've been around for any amount of time, you know that about a decade and a half ago, I got really sick. Matter of fact, I was so sick, I was sick for a couple of years, and it took me about a year to get healthy after being sick for about two years. And the reason I got sick is I built some habits in my life. You have to understand, when I first became the pastor at South Point Church, there was all these people, and we grew really fast, and I thought it was my job to answer and be a part of everyone's life. And so I overscheduled. I had the habit of overscheduling my work week and not honoring the Sabbath or taking time or, you know, guarding my family time. You know, I'd be home for dinner, but then I would plan an evening meeting and I was out way too many evenings. And I don't know if you've ever had an evening meeting where you're kind of geared up, but you get home at nine or 10 o'clock at night and you're like, well, man, I need to decompress. I deserve the right to have a little bit of free time. So I stay up and watch some TV till 10 or 11 or 1130. The problem is my alarm still went off at oh dark 30, but you know, now I'm tired and exhausted. And so I'm rushing because I hit the snooze seven times. Anyone, anyone understand? what I'm talking about here. Hit the snooze about seven times, right? And then I get up because I'm in a rush. I don't have time to make a good breakfast. So I medicate my life with a pot of coffee as I go through the morning, right? And then I overschedule and then I rinse and repeat. And all of a sudden I ended up in the ER. And here's the thing. As I went through that journey over those three years, I, I used to think, man, I'm just, I'm not a very good person. I'm like, I must not be a good pastor. I'm just too weak. And then there were other times I'd be mad at God. God, you don't love me. How did I get sick like this? And you know what I discovered through the whole thing? I wasn't weak, and God absolutely loved me because anyone that would die for you is for you. I had a bunch of habits that were misaligned with the destination that God had for me and that I wanted. And I wonder how many of us tell ourselves that we're weak or we blame God, but maybe if we were honest and took a moment to look at the autopilot habits that we have, then maybe we've ended up in the wrong place because we're on an autopilot and it's misaligned. So I have just two simple challenges as we kick this series off. And here's challenge number one. Matter of fact, it's to buy a book out in the lobby. You can buy it online. You don't have to get it. You can go to the library if they have it. You can do whatever. You can do audio books. And I know some people are like, Matt, I haven't read a book since I was in high school. Great. You can buy it on Kindle and listen to it. Someone will read it to you during your workout or walking. So no one here has an excuse not to like do it, right? So it's called The Common Rule. I read this book and it was kind of talking about, listen, is it possible that we don't end up with the life that we're meant for or we want because our habits lead us in a different direction. It was so good that I asked my staff and the whole church staff went there. And it was so impactful. Not only did I read it, not only did my whole staff read it, I think everyone at South Point who watches or online or here should read this book. So we have some out in the lobby. And if you're online watching, you can just get it wherever. You can go to Common Rule. It'll give you a link and you can do it. And I encourage you to read the first chapter. And I'm not asking you to do more. Maybe if we just did a little bit less Netflix. I know you didn't go there, Pastor Matt. Yeah. A little less Facebook, a little bit less TikTok for some of y'all younger people, right? A little bit less news, you know, because the news isn't for you. They just want to shock you, right? Maybe we could read the first chapter and begin to look and ask ourselves, are our habits aligned with the destination that we want to be? And then here's my second challenge. It's come back next week. Because <laughs> over the next couple of weeks, we're going to give some core habits, some core things that we can set on autopilot to undo the misaligned autopilot so that we can end up with the life that we want and the life that God has for us. Because Jesus tells you and Jesus tells me and Jesus tells we that it's not about more, that it's about doing different. It's learning from him, not just about him. Because he paid the ultimate price so that you, so that we could have a better life and that we could be better at life. Hey, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, you rock. God, the fact that you would send your son so that all, God, you don't wink at our mistakes and our sins and our failures and our poor choices. God, you sent your son to die on a cross so that everyone, anyone, that all of us could come to you and we don't have to clean ourselves up because God, the blood of Jesus can cleanse us. God, that we would tie ourselves to you and not just learn about Jesus, but do and live as Jesus did, who was gentle and humble of heart. God, that when we come to you, 
You don't pile on more. You don't pile on shame. You don't pile on guilt and you don't pile on religiosity. You give us rest to do different. Jesus, may we learn from you so that we can experience a burden that is light and find rest for our hearts and souls. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, and all who agreed said, amen. Church, would you stand and worship with us? The God of covenant, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to Your faithfulness to me.
you so much, worship team, for that great reminder about God's faithfulness. And thank you, Pastor Matt, for uh, just reminding us uh, practically that we can find our rest in Jesus. If you're interested in finding out more about that book or purchasing the book Common Rule, you can go to southpointforyou.com slash common rule. All right. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to those who continue to partner with us financially. Uh, We are so grateful. It allows us to do things like uh, have church online uh, and to have hold our services on Sunday at RC theaters. And so thank you so much. If you would like to give, you can go to southpointforyou.com slash give, or you can click on the give link that's going to pop up in the chat. Uh, Just an announcement that we have for you today is just a reminder that we are collecting school supplies. And if you would like to find out what school supplies are on that list, you can go to southpointforyou.com slash school supplies. They are due back by August 15th, and we are uh, helping to resource some of our solo parent families. We are helping to resource uh, some kids in our after school program, as well as... um, We are partnering with Three Oaks Shelter and the Educational Outreach Center uh, of Leonard's Freehold. And so if you would like to partner with us in that way, we would greatly appreciate it. Again, all supplies are due back by August 15th. All right. I just want to say thank you so much again for joining us today. If you would like to uh, reach out to us this week, uh, if you need any resources or to get connected, you can go to um, you can go to social media and connect us that way, or you can uh, email, text, or call us at two four zero nine two five eight seven eight seven. We hope you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you soon. And remember, you matter deeply to God.